Well, this is a little bit different today. We are once again live uh, recording this show, and I'm Spencer Brinkerhoff III, so we are live from Studios B3. Today, uh, we're doing something very special. Um, I have been involved with the Star Wars art shows since 2008, and I've made a ton of fantastic friends. I think I know personally almost every single person that's in the art so show this time. And one of the things that I want to do to, to be part of the art show, because I'm not going to be there myself in person, I want to make sure that all of my artist friends get a little bit of plug today. So today, uh, we are going to be talking with superstar artist Matt Bush all about his involvement in Star Wars Celebration and all about his brand new art piece. And with that, um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Matt and I'm going to push a button and... Matt, you're up on the screen now, and it's fabulous to Skype see you. Awesome. Spencer, <laughs> it's so good to see you, and that's great. That means uh, we've been friends for 10 years, oh but my I feel gosh. like I've known you my whole life. It seems like... Uh, it seems like it's been longer than that because we, you know, we know each other so well. No, but 10 years is, uh, you know, that's, that's a long time, though. I mean, holy yeah. cow, I think I've known you longer than you've known your wife, maybe. Yo, yeah, oh, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Now, Matt. <laughs> the stories you could tell her. No, no, no. I don't have any stories. No. Lindsay, nothing. Uh, I got nothing. So when I introduced you briefly, we got to see your artwork, just a flash of it there. I'm going to go back yeah. to another image real quick, and I'm going to turn this on where we can see the full, let me move my hand like this, all the way up and down. We've got this gigantic brand new art piece. So let's start with talking about the art that you've created for this year's Star Wars Celebration. I guess, yes. what, how are they calling this thing? It's Orlando 2017. Is that, is that how we're referring to it? I believe so. Star Wars Celebration Orlando 2017. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. So I'm looking. Yeah, they stopped with the numbers. Yeah. Like... Yeah, that's fine. Because they did the Europe and etc. So uh, your art piece this year is, it, it's, it's new. This is not your normal. Well, I, 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 I feel like it's still your style. I, I can still see you in this art piece, but I don't think mm -hmm. I've ever seen you do anything that's this type of, of gigantic, like, a tribute to all of the merchandise and the fantastic, wonderful fandom. Uh, yeah. Let's start by call. Uh, tell us the title of this piece. Oh my gosh. You know what? I don't have a title yet. <laughs> so I have to come up with the title that I want to call it. I yeah. want to call it a love letter to Steve Sansweet. Oh my goodness. That's what I want to call it. But uh, I, uh, I may call it cosmic collectibles or 40 years of cosmic collectibles. Right. Um, right. Something like that. Huh, we'll yeah. bra we'll brainstorm during <laughs> during the uh, during the this podcast today and see if what we can come up with. Good, I need some help. So we've got okay. So when you think about collectibles and you think about maybe your own personal collection, um, how yeah. did you start to sort of gather all of the imagery and where did this idea come from to put this all together? Gosh, um, I don't even know where the idea started, but I know that. One of the things, and I'm sure you can, uh, I'm sure you would know this too, that becomes really difficult for us artists uh, doing this this project for celebration is that usually we can't do anything new, so we're not given anything, any resources for upcoming movies or anything. Right, right. So we can only work with what's from the past, but at the same time, there is so much amazing Star Wars artwork out there from so many artists. So every time we have a celebration and we have an opportunity to submit a new piece, right. it's the question of what can we do that's amazing <laughs> that no one's ever seen, right. but people have seen, but do something completely new that no one's ever seen before. How do we reinvent it again? And that becomes a challenge. And so that every time that's kind of what I think we're all scraping to find something right. new and, uh, Somehow I just I just kind of thought about the idea of collectibles and um, not just the coolest ones, but the rarest ones and some of the strangest ones. And yeah. I just thought it would be neat to uh, um, to have that to focus on that. I think well, and yeah, yeah. I was going to say also just to add to that a little bit. We talked a little bit about the stories that we could tell, and and you mentioned that you know a lot of times with this type of like you know brainstorming and trying to come up with a new idea. 
when we met at Star Wars Celebration Japan, which is 2008, um, you had come to that show with piece that was, well, not, not come to the show, but you had prepared for that show with a piece that was Star Wars Clone Wars. And the Clone right. Wars were, was not out yet. And at, yeah. at sort of the 11th hour, you had to recreate and come up with a whole new piece for that show. So, yeah, you know, I had one weekend, yeah, one weekend to get it all done. And, and you came up with and that one was sort of a, a collage piece as well. But it wasn't the collectibles like this one is. Yeah. Yeah. So now when I'm looking at this piece here, I'm going to go back to another image here. Um, sure. Right here in the middle, oh, we have the word, the logo Star Wars. We see some of the mm -hmm. Funko characters in there. BB-8 is, is taking his his place right there front and center. And I'm also seeing something I'm, I'm thrilled about is Gendy Tartofsky's uh, yes. Obi-Wan Kenobi is, is right in there too. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. I, oh, my gosh. And I just saw Angry Bird. <laughs> the uh, yeah, Angry there's Bird an Angry Bird. Solo. There's also... Tartakovsky's uh, General Grievous is in there too. Oh, and his Yoda. Right. Uh, just because I love it. I love that uh, so much. Now, my, yeah. in, my introduction to um, being part of Star Wars and being able to be at these shows was through creating the art cards for the Topps trading card set and drawing mm -hmm. each one of those individual ones. I see that you have some top cards in there as well. Are those like some of your Topps cards that you drew or, no. or what are those pieces that are in there? No, I actually, um, I, I thought about putting some of my own, like a You Can Draw Star Wars book and stuff, but I really wanted to kind of remove myself from this. A lot of this is just uh, some of the standout cards that I just remember as a kid that were my favorite or bizarre. There's the C-3PO one, the questionable one. You probably know what I'm talking about. <laughs> that uh, Is that a tape dispenser? What's that? Is, was that a, the tape dispenser? Oh, no, I know what you're no, talking about. Yeah, had... the card. It's conveniently covered, but... Right, uh, right. So you don't know if it's the <laughs> one that they fixed or if it's the uh, the original one that came out. Right. But, um, but yeah, so they're just... Um, it's just a lot of the different cards uh, that, uh, that I had grown up with. There's even the Wonder Bread, uh, the Tuscan Raider that, I'm, uh, that I see in there. That was... Those came in uh, loaves of Wonder Bread. Right. Oh my gosh, um, I completely missed those. Yeah. And I see, I see also that there's the uh, the the Yoda costume for your dog is in there. Yeah. <laughs> some I put some of the, some of the weird stuff, you know. And uh, I don't think it made it in, but I I almost put in the there was Yoda soap. That, really? Uh, that came out at one point. Yeah. Did it turn your skin green? I I don't remember Yoda. It, it soap. was a green bar of soap, <laughs> but I don't I don't know if it actually uh, made your skin green or not. But so so as you're going through your collections, you know your own personal collection, you're going through and you're thinking about these these pieces that are collectible that kind of inspired or or motivated you to do these then how did you sort of like put it all together? I mean, sometimes I think that one of the things that's interesting to me is to talk to different artists is figure mm -hmm. out a little bit more about their process. You know, what what is it about sort of like putting together a piece that that you enjoy? Yeah, You know, the, there's the, the Chewbacca mask is on there, you know, the... <laughs> Chewbacca mom? I, Chewbacca yeah. mom's mask is on there, right? And, and yeah. so how did you... How did you like put all of these pieces together? And then what's the process to actually like recreate them and redraw them all so that it's part of your new art piece? Yeah. Well, um, what I started doing, I started collecting reference, trading cards, books, magazines. I was online surfing through, finding collectibles that I had completely forgotten about. Uh, a bunch of Steve Sansweet's books where he's got uh, images of, you know, stuff oh, right, at the ranch. Right. So some of this stuff is is material that I have, but some of it is material that uh, that I didn't have growing up. But like maybe I my friends had it or something like that. Right. But um, in order to try to make it um, a good collection of everything, I actually organized everything by character first. So I had a okay. Luke Skywalker pile, I had a Lando Calrissian pile, I had a BB-8 pile of all the crazy different things, and then I started to go through and I tried to pick which had like a really interesting minifig, or which one 
oh, I definitely have to do, you know, for my Chewbacca pile, I definitely have to have the uh, Chewbacca mom mask, you know, and for C-3PO. If there's anything I've learned doing this, there is no shortage of bizarre <laughs> C-3PO collectibles. <laughs> I can tell you that. So was there was um, there a character in there that you kind of thought, oh, I ought to get this character and it was hard to find? Was there anybody that was sort of like a sh in short supply? Um... No, I don't think so. I think everyone was pretty easy to um everyone was easy to find. It was just it was difficult deciding this, what oh, yeah, of which course. characters were more interesting or what, you know, just narrowing it down was the uh, was the difficult part. Right. I, and as we're talking, I'm sort of like zooming in and trying to get a closer look at all of this stuff. Oh, I see Star Tours is in there. Oh yeah, yeah. Now at the bottom of your uh, at the bottom of your uh, art prints, you've got three sort of like windows down here, and my yeah. my image is not quite clear enough. The far right one says limited edition of two fifty, yeah. I assume, and then what are those boxes for down at the bottom? So the the two boxes, the first two boxes are for remarks. One is uh, a black and white remark. One is a full color remark, if uh -huh. people want to go that far with it. And then uh, way over where it says limited edition 250, yeah. that is where the prints will be numbered, and that is where I sign it. So it's just a symmetrical oh, gotcha. thing where, depend. I mean, obviously all of the prints are going to be signed and numbered, but then depending on if they want to pay a little bit extra to have me uh, do my little doodles on them at the show, it just... Uh, um, if there's a favorite character or a favorite toy that people had, I'll do my best to draw that toy a Sharpie to, oh, uh, man. to is add it, that in there. It's stressful for me to sort of like be like on demand. It's like, oh, oh, uh, what, what would you like me to draw today? And they kind of, they name some crazy character from some, and I'm like, okay, you're going to have to come back so I can Google that and, and make right, sure I draw right. it right. Cause it's your favorite character. I want to make sure I do it right. Yeah. <laughs> And tell yeah. tell everybody what size uh, your art piece is. Well, the original is about three feet by seven feet. It's oh the largest gosh. piece I've ever done. But the actual uh, printed version is uh, 16 by 36. So it's as tall as a movie poster, but it's just a little bit more narrow than that. Okay. Wait, three feet by seven feet. So let's talk about that yeah. for a second. You you gather all of your resources, you organize mm -hmm. them um, all by, by character, and then you lay it all out. And then you've got to recreate all of this on this seven feet of paper. And then yeah. and then how do you how do you get that to be print ready? Do you do you take a photograph of it? Do you scan it in pieces or yeah, what's the I process actually, there? I had to take uh, three photos. And I had to piece it together based on the three photos. Yeah. And the piece was so large, I actually, um, this is the first time I've done a, a piece for celebration that uh, that is like ink line work. Usually I'm doing fully painted material. Right. And um, I didn't do that this time. It would have taken longer. But the real reason I didn't want to do that is I think it would have, it just would have been a mess of color. Yeah, and, I can see. Um, I can see. I no, I, I'm not nothing derogatory, but I completely agree yeah, yeah. with you. Is that you know, if you have all of that fully shaded, then you're gonna lose the pieces in the mess. I've got a box of of Legos. I've got a box of Star uh -huh. Wars toys. You dump those guys out, you know, and it's and it's a mess. Yeah, right. I guess that would have right. been super realistic then, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, so, yeah, so the line art helps make it a little bit more graphic. It's just a little easier to differentiate everything. So, uh, so right. that's why I chose to, to do that. But I did it on uh, giant sheets of Bristol paper uh -huh. so that I could kind of roll it as I was working on it. Otherwise, I would have been laying down on the... Uh, on the actual piece as I was drawing it. Oh my gosh. I didn't even think about that. You're like, yeah. you're like uh, Michelangelo, like painting the Sistine Chapel. You're like, you're, you're like <laughs> living in there with your art piece the whole time. So, yeah. well, let's talk about that aspect to it as well. One of the things that I was super excited about when I read through that contract with Lucasfilm to be able to create the artwork. And that's something yes. that I want to stress here with these artist interviews as well, is that um, this is officially licensed Star Wars artwork. We are able to work directly with Lucasfilm 
through an approval process to make sure that the art is you know up to their specifications and and then we are a uh, license to create that so a as you're doing that and i'm reading through the contract it says that lucasfilm wanted the first right of refusal to purchase mm -hmm. the original of the celebration pieces so if, mm -hmm. if someone is interested in in your original and if lucasfilm has turned that down are you selling this as one potentially? Are you selling this as one big original, or are you going to cut it up and have, have, I haven't have lots I haven't of little pieces? Yet, uh, what to do on that? It could be um, that the thought has crossed my mind. Yeah, the thought okay. has crossed my mind. I'll have to wait and see. Um, that's a bridge I'm going to come to once I find out if George has purchased the piece or not. Right. And that's the other thing that I, I, I was super excited about is that this is not Lucasfilm saying we want to buy it and put it in the vault. This is George Lucas being interested in the artwork. And then um, then it goes maybe to the museum. I don't know where he keeps all of this stuff, but, you know, Ed, that's amazing as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really cool. Now, um, the other thing about these, these Star Wars shows and with the celebration is that there are so many different things to see out on the floor. There's, you know, there, there, Roxy the Rancor has been there in the past. I know that the diorama builders are going to be mm -hmm. putting together a huge trench star, uh, tre da Death Star trench run Hot Wheel set that you can oh, drive wow. Hot Wheels down the trench run. But there is a, an actual area for the art show. And um, in the past, it's all been roped off so that you're in a specific area. But then there's a few of those rogue artists that have mm -hmm. so much Star Wars work that they <laughs> take up two, maybe three booth spaces. Uh, Matt, do you, do you know where you're going to be out on the floor at this time? Or uh... I, I do. I do. I'm going to be, uh, I believe I've got probably one of the best spaces I've ever had. So I think when you walk through the main doors... Um, I think I'm just like, I'm, I'm one of those main aisles facing where there's, I don't know if there's going to be big TIE fighters or what's going to be there right. yet, but we're right on the, we're going to be right on the side, uh, just a little way down. And between Lindsay and I, we have four booths together. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, yeah. But I've been, um, I've been doing official Star Wars art. I don't want to age myself, but uh, it's too been... Late. We've I known know, each other super... 10 years, too late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been doing the art for almost 25 years now. Yeah. And uh, so there's just uh, there's just a lot of product. And uh, um, I've, I'm the only artist uh, in the show, or at all now, who's ever exhibited at every single Star Wars celebration. Wow. Um, so that's exciting as well. And I feel like every time they have one, I feel like I have to do it. I don't want to break that. You know, I want to be the one who's always been there. You know, you're, people are probably sick of me by now. You're but, a staple, uh, you know, everybody's got to show up just to see you again. And now, yeah. now you mentioned that you've been, you know, doing this stuff with this, with Star Wars, with Lucasfilm for 25 years, which is, Almost which is amazing. Years. Well, we'll yeah. call it 30. Um <laughs> <laughs> So here's here's the question. Here's one of the things that I've been thinking about, and, and some of the things that have changed as you've dealt with uh, with Star Wars over the years. Um, mm -hmm. Do you feel like there there's that that things are different? Are we in a growth period? Well, cinematically, we're definitely in a growth period with with the Disney Lucasfilm purchase. I was going to say merger. It's not a merger. It was mm -hmm. a purchase. So. Do you feel like, you know, things are different now, you know, and, and well, of course they're different. What are your feelings about sort of like working with the new team um, and, and how has it changed? Is, are there good things? Are there bad things? And maybe you don't want to comment because it's yeah. sort of like a tenuous relationship. I don't know. Uh, I, I thought I'd ask that as well. I yeah. mean, it's on people's minds, I think. Sure, sure. I'm happy to comment on that. It's... Um... For the most part, I think it's absolutely better. Uh, the new movies coming out, there's it, the Star Wars has never been bigger, right. so it's it's so exciting, it's so amazing. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, with Disney taking over, there are a couple differences. Um, one of the differences has been because there's been a little bit of. Um, Weirdness with some of the licensees. One example would be um, 
uh, prior, Dark Horse had the comics license, but then right, when Disney correct. took over, they own Marvel, so that kind of didn't make sense anymore. So there's a lot of weird situations like that where um, there's a lot of new people. And um, for so long, we had established all of these relationships with a lot of these licensees and even some people at Lucasfilm. So in the past four years, there's just been a lot of there's been a lot of change ups and um, yeah. so there's a lot of new people. So um, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but it's um, it's uh, the sense of family behind the scenes is, mm. is a little bit uh, it's not what it was. And then the only the only big thing that's maybe a little bit weird. This doesn't bother me as much as it bothers a lot of other artists. But for most of our projects, we're not allowed to sign our name to the artwork. Oh. anymore. So that was something that Lucasfilm was always very cool with, always very well, supportive now with, of the individual artist. Yeah, I want, well, I want to, I want to talk about that. I mean, is that does that relate to the celebration piece as well? Is your name not on there, or not the celebration piece? And I think uh, anything involving Acme or fine arts is maybe the one exception. Okay, but anything else, if you're doing even base cards for tops or anything like that. Um, they'll put your name in the fine print on the back, which is, which is still cool that they do right, that, but right. you are not, well, I guess you're allowed to sign your artwork, but if you submit it with your signature on there, they will wipe it right off. Wow. Um, let's yeah. see. I think, I think that that's, uh, Apple shift five is the, uh, is the smart, <laughs> is the smart, uh, fill, uh, the content aware fill. Is that the one they use? So yeah that that's a real thing by the way disney didn't invent that <laughs> <laughs> well awesome so so and the other questions that i have is yeah. uh, and like i think that a lot of people will stop and kind of say okay i i love to see these guys at the show and you know they go out to a couple of different shows it's good to see them at different places but um are they making a living at this? <laughs> and I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's a weird question, but I think it's also important to sort of like, you know, give attention to the artist because more often than not, you know, this is not their only gig. And, and, okay. and art in and of itself, while it does great, you know, so like when I was doing my celebration pieces, they cost 50 bucks a piece. And, you know, if you sell all 250 50 of them, you can make a good profit, but that's just one show and one event. So in addition to doing the Star Wars shows and the Star Wars events, um, what other projects do you have going on with, you know, your art, with your teaching and your own personal projects? I like, yeah. like that hat you have on me. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like this right here. <laughs> um, yeah. Product placement. Um, yeah. There's a lot of things that I do and the, kind of the secret of my success throughout my career has been keeping my hands in a lot of different pots. Uh, so if anything kind of uh, dries up or um, isn't um, in season, I've got other things kind of keeping me busy. So um, primarily people know me as an illustrator, illustrating posters, book covers, uh, stuff for rock bands. Obviously, Star Wars is probably what most people know me for. Um, but then uh, I do have a, a day job, or it's actually a night job, believe it or not, <laughs> uh, teaching at the... Uh, at a local college here in the media and communication arts area. Right. So it's really cool. I get to teach uh, like storyboarding for film and animation. Right. Um, uh, lots of fun stuff like that. And I really enjoy the, um, uh, I, sometimes I feel like I learn more from my students than they learn from me. It's just a really, uh, it's just a really wonderful thing. And then um, my big project, uh, aside from that, is my magnum opus that I've been working on for years and years now. But we're uh, we're about two thirds done filming. Really, um, Aladdin thirty four seventy seven. Yes, and um, uh, very excited about it. We'll actually be showing uh, some sneak peeks of it at the upcoming Star Wars celebration. Awesome. And Star Wars fans are going to dig it because it looks. Um, it's not a ripoff of Star Wars, but it's got robots and starships and right. action, so it's got a Star Wars feel to it. But also Disney fans, uh, it, uh, Disney did not create Aladdin. It's uh, that's it's true. a public domain, you know, fairy tale from uh, from the One Thousand and One Nights uh, uh, collection. But um, uh, but it's it's definitely the Aladdin story uh, flipped upside down, and uh, 
Um, I'm just real excited for everyone to see what we're doing with it. Awesome. Really cool stuff. So the Aladdin 3477, we get 77 from an homage to uh, Star Wars coming out in 19... 19- 77 77 and, so and then 34 yeah. is that just futuristic or is there a 34 reference as well what that is is uh, when i uh became an honorary member uh and when i got my my tk armor I through the 501st right <laughs> i had to choose a um a tk number so um i actually chose which side is it on right here my tk number if you can see right there is tk yep. Three, four, seven, seven. <laughs> the way that I got the number, I couldn't think of anything clever. So if you have a big imagination, and I know you do, if you take the word Matt, and if you take uh-huh. each one of the letters and turn them sideways, the okay. M kind of okay. looks like a three, the A kind of, and then if you have a big imagination, the T's look like sevens. Right. So that's right. how I came up with 3477. <laughs> when it came time to um, to come up with a year in the future, um, I didn't really want it to be 1,500 years in the future, but I just, I really liked the sound of it. Aladdin 3477. I kept trying like, yeah. what about Aladdin 2128? And it just, I ah, didn't have the same ring to it. Right, so, right. 3477 is what it is. And there is a, a funny bit in there where um, Star Wars is celebrating the 1,500, <laughs> 1,500th anniversary so because uh, it'll be a thousand five hundred years after nineteen seventy seven. So that was it's kind of like a Tarantino thing where all of his movies are connected and when his characters go and see the movies, they're watching Kill Bill, right? So <laughs> right. inside of Aladdin, they're watching Star Wars movies and they're like, Oh wow, look at the goofy idea that they had about the future. They were right about a couple of things. <laughs> right, right. Now, yeah. when, when you're when you're working on Aladdin um, and you and you're doing this stuff, do you ever sort of like? Because I know that you have to build sets and then you have to tear them down. Are you saving little mm-hmm. chunks of the set like you just can't get rid of that piece? You know, as much as I as much as I can, but uh, we recycle a lot of stuff too. So we tear it down, we flip it upside down, we paint it a different color, and we hope oh, that right. no one recognizes it's the same stuff, right? You know, over and over. <laughs> but um, yeah, we try to as much as possible, but uh, we also don't have room for a lot of it. It's, uh, I mean, where do you put the right? Oh, hold on a second. Now, being a live show, what ends up happening here sometimes is our uh, our feed kind of like this interrupts. Used to think. Hold on, just a second, Matt. It's a uh, it's a little shaky. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Matt Bush, uh, we got to come up with a uh, a new title. Oh, he's off. We have to come up with a new title for uh, for his uh, for his print. Maybe we'll call it the uh, collector. Hey, I think. Oh yeah. Sorry, but I think I lost you for a second. Just for back. a second. Yeah. Yeah, the video hasn't quite come back yet, but I can hear you and there you're on your live again. Sorry about that. I was trying to fill in That's the right. uh, the air. This is what live Good. recording is all about, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So we were talking about trying to save some little pieces of the set, flip some things upside down, upside down, and hope that nobody notices that you're just using the same thing over again. Mm-hmm. These were great tricks that um, that I actually learned from George Lucas. There's all kinds of uh, crazy things where the um, the cappuccino machines that you saw in the Star Wars Moss Eisley Cantina yeah. later became IG-88's uh, head, head, the bounty hunter. <laughs> right. So there's, yeah, I mean, or or, vi- so. or vice versa. I don't know. There's got to be some sort of like uh, expanded universe story where IG-88, <laughs> you know, one of the IG series droids or the IG Lancers from the Gendi series, they were destroyed and were uh-huh. the bartender went, well, you know, if I put a filter in there, you know, yep. filtering through some robot's head. We'll have to ask Pablo <laughs> next time. I'm sure he'll. Uh, yes, he'll know he knows. <laughs> well, Matt, thanks. Thanks so much for being with us today and talking about yeah. your artwork. Let me let me put your image back up so we can get another shot of that. Again, Matt, um, if people want to follow you, I put down at Matt underscore Bush. Um, that's yes. uh, Twitter. Yeah, that's my Twitter. And um if you type in Matt Bush, you'll find me on everything. I'm on Instagram, uh, Facebook, um, and obviously just mattbush.com, M-A-T-T-B-U-S-C-H. 
um, is where you'll, it's the general hub. You'll find all that fun stuff. Right. And with that, um, you can also go on there and see some of the whiteboard drawings that Matt does in class yeah. to talk about <laughs> what he's teaching. And, you know, you think you talk about pressure at a convention and here you have students kind of like ask you a question. Matt just whips out these drawings and he just, these things look wonderful. And I'm like, thanks a lot, Matt. Okay. I'll just be uh. over here. <laughs> But Matt, you're, you're going to be at Celebration. Um, after uh, the artwork has been revealed on the official sites, um, we, we plan that they will be available for pre-order. Um, yes. I hope that that all works out right and that yes. uh, people will be able to reserve uh, their, their print before having to stand in line to get it. Yeah, um, absolutely. So anything else you want to tell us about before we, uh, we sign off and, and uh, thank you for your time? I just, you know what, Spencer, I want to thank you because it's so cool that you do this uh, for everyone. And uh, you, you've you always been just an amazing uh, part of the Star Wars artist family. And uh, I super appreciate it. And um, we are going to miss you this time. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'm so bummed out. It's going to be a little bit weird not being there. But, I mean, it's it's just a weird time. We're not here to talk about me, though. <laughs> Uh, Matt, well, thank you're thank the best. you so much for doing this, and I look forward to seeing everyone at Star Wars Celebration Orlando 2015. 17. Oh, sorry, 17. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you've been going to every single Star Wars celebration, maybe this is the 15th celebration that you're on now. I don't know how that works, but when you go to all of them, it's okay to be off by a couple of years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everyone. Awesome. That's Matt Bush. You can get his print at the Star Wars Celebration in Orlando this year, 2017. And, oh, I forgot to ask, do you have a price in mind for each one of the uh, the prints that they can pick that up? Oh, geez. Uh, I don't. It's going to be about, uh, it's probably going to be about $50, okay. but I don't know if that'll be forty nine ninety five or what the uh, what the actual price will be, but right. I think it's going to be right. about 50 Excellent. Matt, thank you so much for uh, talking with us today. And uh, as always, you can follow Matt on uh, his Instagram, his his social media at Matt underscore Bush dot com. And I am Spencer Brinkerhoff the third. You can find me at Spencer B3 everywhere I am. All right. Thank you all. And good night, Matt. Talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you, Spencer. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.